Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Welcome to Tim's Tiny Shop. A lot of you already know this, but those of you who don't, my shop is only 10 foot wide by 16 feet long. Not a lot of room, so I've had to learn to be very efficient in my space. And if you're starting out turning, you're probably going to be in a small space too, unless you're really lucky and then I don't like you. But anyway, in my shop, I have to take care of every inch. Every inch has to be used for something. So when you start turning, obviously you're going to need like a lathe and some big stuff and tools, but we're going to get to that later. Let's talk about the accessory stuff you're going to need that will also get the stuff you want to turn onto the lathe. Wood comes in all sizes and shapes. I mean, you're going to have different squares, you're going to have long pieces, skinny pieces, all that. You're probably going to go out and even harvest your own wood. So the first thing you have to understand is you're going to have to cut it to be able to put it on the lathe. So this thing being a square, I don't want to put it on the lathe like this. I need to take these edges off and make my life a lot easier than trying to cut that with a tool. So the first thing in the shop is a bandsaw. You want to have one that has got a lot of workspace on here because if you have the tendency to go out and get green wood, you're going to wind up with logs, right? Well, you need to split those logs in half. Well, to do that, you're going to need a really good throat. And by throat, I don't mean talking. <laughs> Excuse my back and my bald spot here. But this is the throat. So you can actually take a big log, put it in here, and have this much clearance to go through here and cut something that's about 18 inches high. That sort of capacity is really handy. The other thing though is you do want to come up here and be able to do the little cuts and take the edges off. So the bandsaw is an extremely important addition to your shop. Another addition to your shop that I would really highly recommend is a drill press because it's easy to drill away wood sometimes, more easy than putting it on the lathe and getting rid of it. Also, you're gonna to need to take things like a worm screw and use it to attach the wood. And this is my waste block. I always keep it by the drill press so I can test drill to make sure I have the right size hole to screw these things in. Now for the least favorite part of my shop. <laughs> I just don't like to grind, but uh, you know, it's one of those things you have to have to have to do. So obviously you're going to need a bench grinder in your shop and you need a slow speed grinder because even with the high speed steel tools today, you still don't want to have a really fast 3800 RPM wheel going around. You want about 1800, 1600. You'll also notice on this one, I've gone to the uh, CBN wheels now, CNB, CBN, I think it's one of those letters. But anyway, it's impregnated uh, grit in here so you never have anything coming off. It's always a straight flat surface. So this is really cool. You never have to adjust how you sharpen things because this is whittling away. This is there forever. Okay, this is a tool I don't like. We have an ex unexpected visitor here in the shop. I've had to learn to be very efficient in my sp <laughs> See if I can get him to go with... Ah! Whoa. Where'd he go? He's down in here. Oh, there he is. See if I can get him outside. <laughs> ah, bye! See ya! <laughs> I didn't need that face mask anyway. You also might notice that I have a lot of crap, but I have a lot of table space to put the crap on because you need table space to be able to do your work. I'm always doing different things. And actually, now I'm starting to do more metal work in my shop, which is not a really good idea to do in a wood shop because uh, I start about one fire every time I'm working on stuff like this. But you need the table space to lay things out to do your work. I mean, you have to have space and multi-use space because this is my tool. Uh, holder. I got all sorts of stuff in here, but yet it still has a workbench top that I can use. Also, think about this. You're going to need some place you can take a load off. And this is a stool I made a few years ago in one of our shows on PBS. And uh, you just get out here, you start working. You need a place to park your butt so you can actually relax a little bit. Let there be light! 
that's another big important thing you have to think about. Now in here we've blown it out because we've got to do it for video. But I have task lights everywhere for when I'm not shooting on video because I want light on my tools. So if I'm grinding, I got a light right here by the grinder. If I'm doing something on the bandsaw, I have a light right here that I can put on the bandsaw. If I want a light over here on the lathe, I got one that rides on the lathe all the time. Drives Brian crazy because it's too bright and it shines off my head though. And now for the 800 pound gorilla in the room or the 700 and something pound gorilla. This is my American Beauty Robust lathe and it fits my shop and my needs perfectly. And that's one thing you have to consider too. Your shop might be larger, it might be smaller. You might want to turn pins or you might want to turn tabletops. So you're gonna find the lathe you need and you're gonna put it in the space you need, but you gotta really consider this is the main focus. So as you can see, this takes up the whole room right here. It's where I need it. And the important thing about that is, is by having it exactly where I need it, then I can build the whole shop around it and my turning is a lot more easy and effective. Now when you have your lathe, you got to hold the wood on the lathe somehow, so you do need a variety of tools to make that happen. You need some dead center so you can pound that into the wood, and then you need a live center on this end so it will actually spin with the wood while you're turning and holds it. Or you can need a chuck. I highly recommend getting a chuck for your lathe that makes your life a whole lot easier. And then if you want to do other things too, this is a Jacobs chuck and it actually holds drill bits and you can put this in your tailstock and you can drill holes into the wood. But there's lots of different things you can put on your lathe to hold the wood on there. Um, so you're going to have to find what works for you. Different strokes for different turners. You might have guessed by now that I use Thompson tools. Don't know how you got that idea. But <laughs> anyway, I love these tools but one thing I always have believed in is to have individual tools for individual jobs. I don't like regrinding tools to do specialty things and then grinding them back again. You waste a lot of steel. A lot of these tools up here are 10 years old. I haven't ground them away yet. I've been very careful with them. I mentioned metalworking earlier and this is the product of that. What I did is I made some tools that are really handy to me that I can use in the shop. The biggest one I like the most is the angle gauge right here and this verifies that I have the right angles on all my tools and I was really getting tired of trying to figure out how to measure my angles and this is why I came up with this design. Another thing though was finding the centers on wood. So I came up with these center finders which are really cool. I like them a lot. And then on top of that I needed a ruler set that actually was centered on a zero. So I could start on the middle of something and do symmetrical markings out that way because I don't do really good math. Plus it's corked back and they're wider, they're easier to hold. I like these a lot. Now another tool I use in the shop which <coughs> is put together by yours truly here is the elbow tool and you've probably seen it in action a few times and it's the first articulated hollowing system ever invented and it still works great to this day i love the design it's awesome and you might notice there's something sticking out of it right here and this is my brand new laser guide that i just developed and so let me plug it in here what I like about this is this is made of aluminum so it doesn't add any weight whatsoever to the elbow tool so it's really lightweight you have a handle here to adjust, but you're not swinging this arm back and forth like, like you do on other models. Up here, it's just right here. You just use this little handle here and you adjust this here to get the red dot to go down to where you want it. It's very easy to adjust. So those are the tools and equipment that I use in my shop. I hope it gave you some ideas that might be a little bit helpful. But hey, if you do something differently, leave me a comment in the comment section. We can all share ideas and we can all learn from each other. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.